in this Warframe guide, I'm gonna show you the top 10 best companions that you shouldn't miss out on right now. See, in most games, companions are somewhat of an afterthought. Nice to have, but irrelevant for your power level. Not so in Warframe though, because with the recent update, companions have turned into absolute powerhouses that, given the right setup, can get your damage output from this all the way up to this. That's why, in today's guide, I'm not only giving you the companion list, but we're also gonna go over how exactly they work, which mods to best use with them, and of course, how you can get them for yourself. So, after a huge shout out to all generous channel members who helped me keep the lights on, let's jump right into it. First of all, why are companions so good all of a sudden? Well, to be fair, companions in Warframe have always been strong, but apart from a select few meta pigs, there was not much incentive to use most others in your loadout. But with the recently introduced bond mods, some crazy busted new combinations have become possible that we're gonna explore now as we dive into our list. If you're like, you can just pause the video for a second in case you wanna read through all of them first. But all right, let's jumpstart our top 10 now with the first little guy on the list, which would be the Sentinel Diriga. This is a phase surely only a mother can love, but here's some great A MH Blackie dating advice. It doesn't matter if he's ugly as long as he can status prime. And trust me, status prime he can. In fact, if you don't like to constantly switch back and forth to your secondary weapon just to apply some status effects, then Diriga might be a complete life changer for you. See, every companion in the game has access to a certain class of mods called Precept Mods. You know, the ones with the little L- polarity kind of symbol. These are basically skills for the companion that they can use as soon as you mod them onto them. Some are available to multiple companions, others are exclusive to just one. But why am I telling you all of this now? Well, pretty simple, because Diriga has an exclusive precept mod called Arc Coil that only it can use. What Arc Coil does is it zaps up to seven enemies with an electric pulse, as you also see in the background. Now, I agree, at first glance, this sounds kinda meh. I mean, the damage is basically non-existing and a 10% status chance is at best on the lower side of things. So why does this put Diriga into the top 10 companion list? See, the key to greatness here is one of the new bond mods, namely Manifold Bond. This mod makes that companion preset mods, aka your companion skills, automatically apply all the different status types available on its weapon. In other words, if we give our Diriga a weapon with tons of different damage types, the little Arcoil Zap will now not only apply electricity with a 10% status chance, but rather all the weapon's elements all at once. This then gives us an amazing synergy with mods like Condition Overload on our melee or Galvanized Aptitude on our rifle, which drastically increase our damage for every different status type on the enemy. And it doesn't stop there, because Manifold Bond also makes it that killing an enemy with three or more status types applied to them reduces companion skill cooldown. So, in other words, since we're consistently applying these elements to everybody around us, Diriga can continue to zap all the enemies like crazy because every skill reduces the cooldown of the zap itself. Now, this sounds all nice and dandy, but the question might arise, which weapon do we want to use on Diriga to get the most out of this effect? And this comes actually mostly down to personal preference. I personally chose the Hellstrom because it gives us a lot of different damage types to work with, but as long as you mod multiple elements onto the gun, everything is basically fine. This here would be my personal Hellstrom build, just in case you're curious, and this here is how I mod my Diriga. Now, you might notice that there are empty mod slots remaining. This is going to be a common theme throughout the entire video, because to keep it simple and more understandable, all I'm showing here will be the mods that are really necessary to get the desired effects out of your companions, the rest then are basically flex slots that you can use for whatever you like. Now, as you might see, this Diriga build also uses Momentous Bond. Reason for this is that it gives more random elemental damage types to the companion whenever you kill an Eximus. And in Steel Path, that'll happen quite frequently, meaning even more different status effects spread over all the enemies, therefore more damage output for you. And if all that sounds good to you now, then you might be wondering how you can get your hands on your own Diriga. 
And luckily, this is very simple. Just go to the market, buy the blueprint, and build it in your foundry. That's it. Wow, that was quite a lot for just the first entry on our list. But for the rest, I'll try to keep it a bit shorter. And as we move on to number two, I just quickly want to say that it would help out a ton with the algorithm if you could maybe spare a like. This video has taken me ages to put together, so I would truly appreciate all your support. Thank you so, so much. But all right, number two, the Panzer Valpa Phyla. Now, before the rework, this infested companion was already an absolute meta pick. But now, the Panzer has become even more broken to the point where really everybody needs to have one in their arsenal. What the Panzer is most known for, of course, would be its skill, Viral Quilts. Shooting infectious darts at all the enemies, inflicting tons and tons of viral status effects that spread throughout the entire room. Since Viral, as we all know, massively increases the damage that enemies take, to the point where we can even quadruple our damage output with this alone, this is of course very good. But so far, nothing new. What is new, though, is the mod Tenacious Bond. What this does is it gives you a permanent plus 20% crit damage when your companion's crit rate is above 50%. This 20% crit damage, though, is a final multiplier, meaning it takes your entire modded crit damage that you have already and then increases that by another 20%. And with the Panzerbapophila having a base 20% crit chance, we can simply add the mod Bite to get that over 50% and now we constantly rock this crazy 20% crit bonus. Also, if you're using a Warframe who needs loads of health orbs or uses Equilibrium for their energy supply, Synth Deconstruct is a great option here because with the viral spread, literally every kill that you get will count as an assist by the Volpophila, therefore showering you in health orbs. This right here would be the build that I'm running, but apart from all the mods that I've already mentioned, the rest here is basically just up to personal preference. And if you now want to get a Volpophila for yourself, then what you need to do is head over to the Cambian Drift on Deimos, roam the area for a bit to find a wounded Volpophila being attacked by enemies, pick them up and restore them with Sun in the Necrolisk using some of his items. The next companion on our list is a really special one, because this guy is criminally underrated in my opinion, especially in very high-level Steel Path. What I'm talking about here is Shade. Shade is a sentinel and also, I think, the only sentinel available in the game in three different forms, Normal, Prime and Prisma. Nice to know, but for the purpose of this video, which one you use is completely irrelevant. Now, if it comes as a surprise to see Shade on the top 10 list, then you're probably wondering what the heck makes him so great. Well, I'll tell you. See, Shade has a special preset mod called Ghost. What this does is it makes you invisible as soon as there are enemies within a 24 meter radius and this invisibility has no limit. It lasts as long as enemies remain in that radius or, alternatively, it stops once you start attacking enemies with a weapon. So if you can't attack, then why is this so good? because it only uncloaks you when attacking enemies with weapons. If you deal your damage with Warframe abilities instead, you remain invisible. This is absolutely phenomenal in high-level content where enemies are always surrounding you anyway and can kill you very quickly if they spot you. It makes that, effectively, you keep killing them all while at the same time they don't even see where the damage is coming from. The perfect survivability solution for all caster-type warframes in Steel Path. And the best part is, this invisibility effect does not count as a warframe ability, meaning that if you're visited by an acolyte in your Steel Path run, then yeah, sure, they might cancel your warframe abilities, but Shade's invisibility is not affected by that as you can see in the background. Also, since we can't attack with guns anyway in this setup, it's completely irrelevant which weapon you put on our Shade. That's why I personally recommend the Volcax, because with critical delay, it can get over 50% crit chance, therefore also enabling the crit damage bonus from Tenacious Bond that we've seen on the Vulpophila before, which in turn then leads us to this overall build. Sounds good? Well, then you'll be happy to see that you can simply buy the blueprint for Shade from the market and then build him. The next companion, to no one's surprise, definitely belongs on every top 10 list, 
and that would be the Smeda Cavat. What makes this cat-like creature so awesome is definitely not its performance in combat. But what the Smeda lacks in offensive capabilities, it 100% makes up in terms of utility. See, Smeda Cavats have access to a special mod called Charm. And what it does is, it allows the Smeda to regularly buff you with one of many possible random buffs. These reach from crit chance over rare resource drops up to a very strong double pickup booster. Or, in other words, if you're lucky, then the Smeda will give you the effects of a resource, credit, and affinity booster all at the same time, lasting for around two minutes. This is huge. Since Warframe is a game all about looting and grinding, it comes to no surprise that the Smeda Kavat is your ideal companion in pretty much any type of farming scenario. Now, I gotta mention one important thing here though. The developers did announce that they plan to nerf this mod in the near future. However, they haven't stated how exactly they're planning it to look like, or when that change will come into effect. So, depending on how this rework will end up for Charm, the Smeda might lose its spot on today's list, but until then, this little fella is a must-have. When it comes to modding, we again use the previously mentioned Tenacious Bond Bite combo, as well as Tekken Hands to increase the duration of the Smeda's buff even further. The rest of this build is pretty much flavor. Now, in order to get a Smeda for yourself, what you first need to make sure is that you have a Kavat Incubator Upgrade segment installed in your orbiter, the blueprint of which can be dropped by Grenier Hayika Masters or, alternatively, researched in your clan's dojo. Then, you go and run any mission of your choice in the derelict tile set on Deimos, where after some time, you will encounter these invisible Furl Kavats. Scan them with your Codex or Samara Scanner, and you'll have a chance of receiving Kavat genetic codes in the mission rewards. Once you have 10 of these genetic codes, you can start a random Kavat incubation in your incubator, which has a 50% chance of ending up as a Smeda or, alternatively, an Adarza Kavat. If you want to skip all that grind, though, you can also just buy a Kavat starter pack in the market for around 100 platinum. So yeah, that's right, you only get a 50% chance of your Kavat actually being a Smeda. However, that's not too bad, because the next entry on our list just so happens to be the other 50%, aka the Adarza Kavat. This one, just like the Smeda and the Panzer Valpophila, can and should be equipped with the Tenacious Bond Bite combination to boost your crit damage, but in case of the Adarza, that's not where it ends in terms of crit. Because the Adarza Kavat has access to the skill Cat's Eye. This one gives you and your allies plus 60% crit chance for 10 seconds being available every 20 seconds, meaning you kinda have it up a third of the time. Now, what's special about these 60% though is that they work as a final additive bonus just like Arcane Avenger. Or in other words, even if your weapon has 0% crit chance, with the buff from Cat's Eye, you'd still bump that up to 60% and in combination with Arcane Avenger, you would even go beyond 100%. This is specifically great with weapons like the Kuva Nukor, which has a very high crit damage multiplier, but therefore next to no crit chance. When it comes to modding, to make this buff last a little bit longer, we opt for attack and hands, but the rest of the build that you see here is again up to your personal preference. And speaking about all these companion builds, I am planning to also make a dedicated guide specifically on how to properly mod your companion just like I already did for guns and melees in the past. So, in case you don't want to miss out on that, day one, then you might want to think about maybe leaving the channel a sub. Welcome to the crew. But now, let's go on. Next, another sentinel, and this time, it's Nautilus. This stylish looking fella is absolutely amazing, to the point where it could even radically mix up some well-established builds. Here's what I mean. For many weapon warframe combinations and playstyles, especially for melee, you ideally want to have all your foes neatly grouped up in one blob to then hit them all at once. To do so, there are different methods of course, but mostly you'd probably have to infuse a grouping ability from another warframe via the helmet system, therefore using up your helmet ability slot. Now this is where Nautilus comes into play and turns the entire system up on its head. Because with its skill Cordon, uh, no, not that one. Ah yeah, this one. Nautilus automatically groups up nearby enemies into clusters, which is surprisingly effective. 
I mean, sure, it's not as crazy as Max Pull, of course, but to be honest, it also doesn't have to. The fact alone that your companion of all things can now take care of the grouping part of your loadout all by itself means you now have the ability to pick another highly beneficial helmet skill. Now, to make sure that Nautilus uses this grouping skill as often as possible, we install Manifold Bond, which reduces its ability cooldown whenever we kill enemies with three or more status effects, and to ensure that these status effects will also be on the enemy, we equip Nautilus with the Hellstrom, which, in my opinion, is the best primer weapon for Sentinels. Since you construct, if you need the orbs, and the rest of this build here is mainly up to your personal preference again. However, there's unfortunately one downside to Nautilus. In contrast to all the other Sentinels on today's list, for this one you cannot simply buy the blueprint from the market. Instead, you gain the main blueprint and the different components from the rotations B and C in the Railjack mission Arva Vector on Neptune Proxima. But while Nautilus is surely great and I think a very strong meta pick, I now want to shed some light onto a very different kind of companion that kind of flies under the radar it seems, and that would be the Sisters of Pavo's Hound. Now, I don't want to get too much into the nitty gritty details here on how exactly the whole Sisters and Hound system works, because that's kind of worthy of its own entire video. But here's what you really need to know about it. There are three different types of Hound in the game, each coming with one exclusive precept mod aka one exclusive skill. Also, Hounds are modular, so depending on which combination of body parts you use to build one, there are even more skills that you can theoretically get depending on the configuration. However, these precept mods can still be equipped on all types of Hounds as soon as you have them, you just need to get the specific Hound type ones to acquire the mod. That's why the Hound that you end up using actually doesn't matter all that much in the end. You can also do it like I did and simply get one random Hound and then buy the mods that you need from other players, saves a lot of time. But now, which Hound mods do you actually want? In an ideal world, you'd want to have the Dorma Hound with the Hinta Stabilizer. With this configuration, you would receive the mods Repo Audit and Synergize Prospectus. These two are extremely strong, but in case you already have them, you could as well put them on any other type of Hound, it completely doesn't matter. Now, why are these two mods so great? Pretty simple, Synergize Prospectus is a skill that lets your Hound shoot out a lightning that hits up to 7 enemies and deals damage in a small AoE. And thinking back to our Diriga build from the beginning of the video, if we now also use Manifold Bond as well as Momentous Bond, then this Chain Lightning has some crazy status priming capabilities. Just, you know, put a lot of different damage types onto your Hound's weapon to make all of this work. Also, since Hounds generally have quite a high shield capacity, you can get your shields to over 1200 with just a redirection mod. This then enables you to use Reinforced Bond, giving you a ton of fire rate for free, should that be what you need. But the real kicker with the Hound would be the other preset mod called Repo Audit. This one lets your Hound create a magnetic field with a massive 30 meter radius that completely and permanently disarms all enemies within it. This is huge! Just imagine a Steel Path mission, but none of the enemies can actually shoot you because your Hound constantly drowns them with magnetic pulses. Now, sure, this skill does have a cooldown, but guess what? With Manifold Bond, killing enemies affected by three or more status effects reduces cooldowns, and well, with all the status priming going on with the Chain Lightning, pretty much every enemy will have at least three status effects on them. So long story short, not only does this build here give you a great deal of passive status priming, it also gives you surprising amounts of survivability by constantly disarming every enemy in sight. So go out there, hunt a sister of Pavos to get your hands on one of these bad boys as soon as possible. Now, not too long ago, I published a video on how to never run out of energy in Warframe, listing all different types of methods to replenish your energy. Or so I've thought. Because indeed, there was one fatal oversight that I made, and that would be the next companion on today's list, Death Cube. And no, that's not a typo, there really is no A in Death Cube. Well, video's already long enough, so to make it short, Death Cube's got a skill called Energy Generator. This gives you an energy orb whenever Death Cube has assisted in 10 kills. Quite nice for energy sustain. So, 
How do we ensure that these assists happen as often as possible? Well, we give Death Cube, again, the Hellstrom and hope the explosive radius hits as many enemies as possible. For the build, I also opted for Momentous Bond and then a bit of fluff around it, but if you want to go for the full budget approach, then all you really need is Energy Generator. And the best thing, you can get Death Cube again just from the market. And now, from an energy supplier to a lifesaver. The next companion on our list would be the Sly Volpophila. This critter can also be obtained in the Cambian Drift on Deimos the same way as the Panzer Volpophila that we talked about earlier, and I think for many players out there, this one very much flies under the radar, but it definitely shouldn't. See, while other companions cause immediately visible effects, the genius of the Sly Volpophila is more of a hidden mechanic. With its skills Survival Instinct and Slide Evolution, the Volpophila gives your Warframe evasion. Or, in other words, it makes that when you're hit by an enemy, there's a chance that you're actually, well, not hit by the enemy. That's why many of us don't realize just how powerful this little passive buff can be. Especially in high-level content where enemies deal tons of damage, not being hit and evading bullets is a great boost in terms of survivability. I personally really like to use the Sly with my Zaku, who already reduces enemy accuracy by 75%, and then with the Sly buff on top? Well, let's just say Grineer are gonna have a very tough time staying on target. In terms of mods, again, we use the Tenacious Bond Bite combo, then Tekken Hands for longer skill duration, and in case you need the Fire Raid, then you can also use Reinforced Bond because the Sly can get over 1200 shields with calculated redirection. This right here would be my build, again, free slots up to personal preference, and now let's move on to the last companion on our list, which would be Helios. Now, we all know and love his ability to automatically scan stuff for your codex, but believe it or not, that's actually not why he's on today's list. Instead, the reason for it is Vicious Bond. As you might know, Helios is the only sentinel in the game that can wield the Deconstructor weapon. And the Deconstructor is considered a glaive type and therefore a melee weapon. In other words, when Helios hits an enemy, that's considered a melee hit. Therefore, we can use Vicious Bond to reduce the enemy armor whenever Helios hits them, and even better, if that enemy was already hit by one of your abilities, the armor stripping effect will spread in a small AoE. So, to make sure that we're hitting as many enemies as possible, as quickly as possible with the Deconstructor, we go with Whirlwind for faster projectile flight speed, Quick Return so the Glaive doesn't bounce around like crazy all the time, and any attack speed mod of your choice. Then, I personally added Momentous Bond for the additional elements, as well as Duplex Bond because more Helioses on the field means more projectiles stripping enemy armor. With this build right here, we of course don't go crazy in terms of armor reduction, like Necrosis Terrify for example, but still it's a nice and definitely noticeable passive side effect that I've really learned to appreciate over time. Now, if all that companion modding talk wasn't enough for you yet, then you absolutely gotta check out my guides on how to mod guns as well as how to mod melees in Warframe. Another massive shout out also to Akimbo Fade, Niels V, Lamies, Demon Lord Zell, Disorder Demon, and all other generous channel members for all your support. We'll see each other, hopefully, in the next one, and until then, as always, good loot.